おかえり。It's been a while, hasn't it? Welcome back to my channel, May Between the Pages. My name is Taylor, and today we're going to be doing a video that's a bit different、uh, from the usual content that I put out.、Uh, as I. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, May Between the Pages. My name is Taylor, and today we're going to be doing a video that's a bit different from my usual content. Now, you may have noticed that I've been MIA for the past month, month and a half. I've been taking a break from BookTube, Book Twitter, kind of the book world, kind of the internet in general, really. I haven't really been engaging with social media、uh, as much as I was before. And、uh, this was due to a huge Burnout that happened to me completely unexpectedly.、Um, I didn't really feel it coming so much, it just kind of hit me like a brick wall. And it was kind of a burnout, not just for books, but just for internet social media life. And I wanted to make a video just discussing and talking about burnout and how it happens, why it may happen. And I feel like I've seen so many people on BookTube. Recently, in the past year, saying, Hey guys, I'm going through a burnout. I'm going to stop making content for a while. I feel like I've seen so many people do this and say this. And I wanted to explore why these burnouts could be happening in our community, why people feel incapable of creating the content that they they say they enjoy making,、uh, that brings them joy. but A lot of people are struggling with being able to produce that in the last year or so. This isn't gonna be one of those videos where it's like, you know, the top 10 tips for getting out of a reading slump or how to avoid burnout. This isn't necessarily an advice video, although I will be、uh, mentioning some things that helped me get out of the burnout that I was in. I'm gonna talk more about like why these burnouts might happen and how I think the culture, the reading culture that we've created, may, you know, Add to that. Before I get started on my main points, I am in a different angle <laughs> than I am in my usual videos. This is going to be more of a chatty video, a little bit different style, so I wanted to be sitting down for it. So that's why we're at a different angle here. The first point that I want to talk about is reading or the love of books is a hobby, first and foremost. So let's get that straight. <laughs> it is a hobby. But it's a hobby that can be used for fun, for、uh, you know, escapism, for education, for many different facets of you know, the human experience. Reading can be used for that. Whereas other hobbies, such as knitting or going to the gym, in my case,、uh, doesn't really have this multifaceted aspect to it, where it can be used for many different things. And I think those who use it more for fun or you know, as escapism can sometimes end up clashing with those who use it more for educational purposes to further their knowledge. And that's a very unique thing for books, for reading, in my opinion.、Uh, maybe there are some other hobbies, maybe film or、um, you know, those who are into other types of media may have these kinds of clashes within their community as well. I'm not sure, as I'm not a part of it. But I do think that reading is quite unique in that regard. So if you are in either camp, I think that the, the burnout that you may feel、uh, can come from not always engaging with those who use reading in the same way that you do. I'm in no way saying that either usage is better than the other. Both forms are completely valid. But I think that some people are feeling the stress of their way of looking at reading clashing with the way another person looks at reading. The second point that I want to talk about is that books being a hobby can also kind of make reading sneaky in taking over other hobbies. Let me try to explain this. <laughs> So, for me, my main hobbies are reading,、uh, weightlifting in the gym,、uh, hiking. I also absolutely adore listening to music. I used to play drums, so music is, is a big part of my life. And because reading is such a big hobby and, and a huge part of my life, when I started making content about it, it kind of took over the time that I spent on my other hobbies in a, in a way that I didn't really realize that that was happening. 
it was kind of like the cuckoo bird in the nest <laughs> of my hobbies. So um, I think there were other factors that contributed to this, but uh, I wasn't going to the gym as much. Um, you know, the, the frequency with which I went hiking really decreased. I was exchanging all of the times I would listen to music for audiobooks. And I love audiobooks. I've raved about them on my channel before, but there is a place in my life personally for just music where I enjoy that particular hobby. And I think that audiobooks really took over that realm. Um, even when I was in the gym, like I wasn't going as much at all, but even when I was in the gym, I was listening to audiobooks because I wanted to get books read rather than listening to music that usually makes me feel powerful, makes me feel good in the gym. And I think that that exchange was taking a toll on me, you know, little by little. Then there's this added aspect of booktube actually turning this hobby into kind of, sort of, a little bit work, <laughs> especially if you make money from booktube. Uh, for people like me who have a smaller channel, there is no, no monetary aspect of this, but you know, it is turned into the production of content rather than just reading books for yourself. And there are definitely positive aspects to this and negative aspects to this. Uh, but the negative aspects, I think, started to kind of take over for me a bit. And that really contributed to my burnout as well. This goes really well into my third point, which is monetizing your free time. <laughs> now, I use monetizing not necessarily in the sense of getting money. Like I said, for smaller channels like me, there's usually not a monetary incentive. But when I say monetizing, I mean using your free time to create content. So I found myself enjoying reading, uh, but I didn't really feel like filming or doing a vlog. Uh, but I was berating myself in my head saying, hey, this is a chance to be making content. Why are you not making content right now? Uh, just, you know, flip on the camera and catch yourself reading right now. But I didn't want to. Like, I wanted to just be by myself. And I think that this pressure we put on ourselves, this conversation that, you know, content creators can have, whether there's money involved or not, can really affect the way that you view the hobby that you've turned into the content. Does that make sense? <laughs> So before, reading was more something I did for myself in my spare time, but because I was making content out of it, I felt like I was wasting time reading and not filming. Does that make sense? Uh, so I think that that contradiction also really played into the burnout that I had. This next one is gonna ruffle some feathers, <laughs> so <laughs> let's go. The next factor that I think contributes to booktube creator burnout is that the conversations that we're having, while important, and the discussions are necessary, and I believe that the goal of these, these conversations are, are correct, uh, the way that we're having them is not, is not very helpful. Especially, uh, like in my notes I wrote, I did because I did make notes for this video, I made like um, bullet point notes, uh, I wrote in huge block letters, Twitter. <laughs> So if you're on Twitter, you probably know where I'm going with this, but I've heard a lot of people discuss the fact that nuance on Twitter specifically, but in general, online discourse is missing. And I quadruple that, that thought. I've seen some really engaging, um, constructive conversations that have happened within the community about, you know, consumerism, racism, ableism, sexism, you name the ism. Uh, those conversations have been had uh, in constructive ways on panels, I believe, where you can kind of see each other's face and that leads itself to more nuance or being able to discuss things in a way uh, that, you know, kind of, you treat the other person as a person. But Twitter, doesn't really lend itself to that type of conversation. It, it just doesn't. And you can use Twitter however you wanna use it. You can use it as a ranting space. You can use whatever tone you desire to express your beliefs. But I think we've started to equate Twitter with a place to start conversations and discourse. And that's just not what it's for. Like a lot of time I see this formula on Twitter, which is if I associate you with X book or if you like X book, you are a terrible person, unfollow me. And that is the person's right to tweet 
that. That's fine. But it shouldn't be equated with a discussion starter <laughs> or with a discourse, you know, being being begun because that's just not what it is because it doesn't allow people to engage with what you said. It's either unfollow me or agree with me. And that just doesn't lend itself to any nuanced conversations. Uh, when it comes to more interpersonal connections, you know, the book club that I'm a part of, a lot of us, you know, read different genres, have different goals with our reading. And I think in the discussions that we have, we have this like intersection of ideas that can, you know, show me, you know, a new genre that I wasn't looking at or a new group of marginalized authors I should be looking at. And then the maybe the way that I talk about things has opened up the thinking of others in, in the book club that I'm a part of. And we just have this kind of ability to not necessarily agree to disagree. I don't want to say that. Well, <laughs> sometimes when we like dislike characters or dislike books that the other person likes, but there's this ability to have a nuanced conversation about things, which I really, really value. Um, I've also had conversations, you know, in DMs with people where miscommunications have happened, but because we're willing to provide each other with the grace to understand that there was a miscommunication or understand why the person may have felt that way or whatever, uh, we've been able to, you know, grow actually from this situation and, and move on and, and come away with something learned. Uh, but I don't think that that really happens in a lot of the discourse, especially on Twitter, but in a lot of the ways that people are engaging with each other now. Then the burnout of this comes when you feel like you can't uh, engage or I mentioned in a previous video how booktube has changed my reading uh, mostly in positive ways but one of the few negatives was that I felt that I uh, you know I often felt paralyzed with what book to choose next because I felt like something was going to be wrong with it be it the author be it you know even if I knew nothing about the book if I if I say that I'm going to read this the reaction could be quite harsh online and uh, this leads us to the concept of cancel culture now, a lot of people say that cancel culture doesn't work. And I agree that it doesn't work in the way it's intended because often the person who is the, the source of this issue, um, who is the cause of it, uh, or the person in power, usually does not feel the consequences of, you know, people, you know, calling them out. But along the way, a lot of smaller creators or smaller people in this community uh, do feel the backlash from this and it's often worse for you know people of color um i've seen a lot of um people of color be very very harshly scrutinized for things that others can get away with especially if they're small creators so i'm trying not to use concrete examples here because i want this to apply to lots of different situations in in our community but let's take a concrete example here of a young person who discovers that they like twilight or love Twilight. This younger person probably likes it for a lot of the reasons that people in my generation, pushing 30, <laughs> we love it over here, but people in my generation really enjoyed this series. And this other younger person who just discovered it probably likes it for a lot of the same reasons that my generation did. And then they learn that there's this community that they can enter uh, online where they can talk about books. Uh, but then as soon as they express you know, this, this love of this franchise that many people do still love and have loved in the past, uh, they are deemed as, you know, a horrible person. Uh, why would you, why would you express those feelings? And I think that this young individual often ends up feeling like, all right, well, why did I even try? I'm just, I'm not going to express, you know, how I feel or my love of books online anymore. Um, and I think that this is the kind of wave what's the word I'm looking for? Ripple effect of cancel culture, um, even when it doesn't actually, you know, have consequences on the person that it's supposed to, others can be caught in like the crossfire of it. And I think that this can then lead to the feeling of burnout. So I don't think that this personally was a huge part of my burnout, but I do think that there was a sort of mental exhaustion associated with this constant like lack of nuance that we, we have around us right now. I would love to hear what you guys think about, you know, this section of my video. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, I'm open to those conversations down in the comments down below. Okay, let's come out of the fire here for a little bit and talk about the last couple of points that I think that are contributing to the plethora of burnouts that I'm seeing. 
um, including myself, right? I was one of them. So the next point is that unique content does not do well. There are a lot of creators out there that do unique content that don't fit into the main like workhouse, like main videos that we have uh, on booktube, you know, wrap ups and, and oh my God, I haven't filmed in so long. What are our main videos now? <laughs> wrap ups, uh, TBRs, right? Favorites lists are big, you know, some, um, some different tag videos that are really popular. If it's not kind of in that main wheelhouse, uh, it doesn't really perform well. And when you're a creator who, who finds passion or the most joy in that more unique content, it can be really disheartening when it doesn't do well. To use me for an example, some of the videos I enjoy making the most are my booktube bartender series uh, because it combines a bunch of my hobbies in one, um, as well as my uh, Japanese yokai and mythology series. That is like my soul's work. I love making those videos, but neither of those perform well. Uh, at all compared to other more typical videos. And that's not me saying like, it's your guys' fault and the algorithm's fault. You must like my videos. Um, that's not what I'm saying. And I think that most people who make unique content, that's probably not how they feel either. But it is disheartening when, especially if you're a smaller creator like me and there's no monetary aspect to it, you're putting a lot of like, you know, time and sweat and tears into the product and it just doesn't perform well. And I think when that happens enough, you're just going to end up feeling burnt out, uh, at least for a little while. It's not also just that unique content doesn't do well, but it's also, I think, the fact that people are forcing themselves to read popular books in order to make popular content, even if they're not interested. So an example for this in the, you know, more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Fantasy. Fantasy uh, booktube community might be uh, The Wheel of Time. So The Wheel of Time is a much beloved series. And I, and trust me, I believe people when they say it has a reason to be beloved <laughs> uh, and that there's a lot of merit to it. But I think that a lot of people in order to prepare for, you know, the, the adaptation coming out, wanting to read the books before that happens, also wanting to jump on, you know, creating that content, the train of creating that content. I've seen a lot of people forcing themselves to read it when they don't really seem interested in actually reading it. Uh, and I think that that could definitely lead to burnout if you're forcing yourself to read books that you're not in the mood for. Uh, so this is just an example from the, the fantasy, you know, the adult fantasy aspect of booktube, but I'm sure each little genre has its own example of this. Uh, but I do think that that's really contributing to the sameness of content and also the, you know, the lack of inspiration some people might be feeling in creating content. And that, I think that leads nicely into my last point, which is feeling uninspired. Now, I think there are a lot of factors that can lead to feeling this way as a creator. But for me, some of the main things were seeing a lot of the same books, um, you know, kind of in the content that I'm watching. Now, a lot of that is also because I think I got stuck in watching the same creators um, or the same like section of booktube. And I think that I can do better coming back now to kind of expand that and watch, you know, different sections of booktube. Uh, but I think that when you see the same books or the same topics talked about a lot, you start to lose a little bit of inspiration yourself, you know, like, uh, well, that's been talked about, even though I loved that book and I want to talk about it, it's been talked about. So what's something else that I can discuss? And you can get into creative rut in that regard. Now, this is the part of the video where I do give a little bit of advice, which is what worked for me um, when I was feeling uninspired, which is to take a step back from this smaller community of booktube and remember that there is an entire world of people who love reading and people do different things with this love with this hobby. And something that really helped me was reading this magazine, this wonderful little magazine called O oh Reader. Uh, I have, I think, issue, the first issue and the third issue here. Um, these are only available in America and Canada, unfortunately, but my wonderful mother sent them to me in Japan. Um, and these are about readers. So not about the books themselves, but about people who enjoy books. Um, and it talks about, you know, sometimes there are book recommendations from, from the people um, featured in here, but a lot of it is like about their life and what they do with reading. Um, 
Uh, there's an article in here about, you know, um, a bunch of guys that have a podcast uh, where they talk about reading. There's another article in here about a young man who was so inspired by the things he read on the back of jazz records when he was young that it inspired him to now create like youth centers for, you know, marginalized youth and things like that. Uh, it's just, it, it's inspiring and you get to see what different readers are doing with this hobby, how it's inspired them or, or the way that it affects their life. And it's, it was such a good reminder for me that while I love booktube and I do think that this is my reading community, there are so many people in the world doing so many different things with reading. And that was a perspective I think I was missing. And I would highly recommend that if, whether it's, you know, getting your hands on these magazines, which I do wholeheartedly recommend, or just researching outside of the space for a little while, I think it might help give some clarity. I've also got some really good ideas for videos to make um, reading these magazines. So yeah, these, these really helped me. So those are my thoughts on why we're having this kind of epidemic of burnout uh, within our, our small community. I would love to hear your thoughts down below if you think there are other contributing factors, if you think that some of what I said was flat out wrong. Uh, let, let's talk, let's figure it out. Um, but I do feel really happy to be back. I think that the break that I took was really necessary. Um, I've really, like I mentioned, been able to reflect on some things and, and, uh, and figure out how to reprioritize things in my life, like going to the gym, listening to music. I think I have a much better balance of that. And uh, reading is starting to bring me joy again. So I am really excited to come back. I do have recent reads because just because I wasn't making content doesn't mean I wasn't reading. I also never made my July wrap up. <laughs> so I will be coming back with those videos hopefully soon. Um, I think it'll take me a while to get more into the habit of filming. Uh, this was a long one to come back with. <laughs> but yeah, look for more content in the future and I'm just excited to start engaging with all of you guys again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell. I'd love to have you as part of this community. It really helps me with the algorithm, and I appreciate it. But for now, I'm going to head out. Jenny!